Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today we're going to talk about how to paint female faces. So I have a uh, female face here that's going to go into separate, I've got it on a little stick, it's going to go into my Terminator armor over here for my Inquisitor. And uh, I thought this would be a good chance to talk about the nature of painting female faces. Now, there's lots of different paints you can use. So as usual, take what I'm saying for my paints with a grain of salt. I don't ever like to really prescribe paints for things like skin tones because there are a million ways to do this. That being said, I'll go through my recipe today. But before we get into the specific paints, I want to talk about the nature of sort of the female face and where it's different. So a couple things that you tend to see different with female faces is first off, they tend to be more pointed along the a lower T line. And what I mean by that is they tend to have more pronounced uh, noses, lips, and uh, chins. So the face tends to come to more of a triangle, uh, whereas male jaws in the way that the modelers tend to sculpt. this is None of this is a reflection of reality, by the way, necessarily. So, but... When we tend to see in figures is female faces tend to be more triangular, male jaw lines tend to be more squared. As a result, because there there are also more pronounced cheeks uh, on female figures, what you get is a lower T uh, highlight pattern. So down the center of the face and across the cheek line is where you generally want to see your highlights fall. Whereas on male faces, it tends the brow tends to be more heavy and pronounced, and the jaw tends to be more square. So you tend to get more of a capital T highlight pattern. Um, but what we're going to do here is we're going to walk through painting this face up. Now, I've zenithal this with some different colors. So it's more of a, a whole red and brown up into an ivory. That's partially because of the hair I want to use and partially because I wanted it, because I was painting this separate. Uh, I did a different zenithal to make skin tones easier. So let's talk about the skin tones we're going to use. Uh, what we're going to use for this are, uh, what I'm going to use is we're going to start, there's no actual flesh tone here. Um, the closest thing we've got is this Fantasy and Games Black Art Brown, which actually is a fairly, like, that is a pretty close flesh tone for a brown. I actually quite like this as a base flesh tone. Um, for some of our shadow colors, we're going to use some Scale Color Indian Shadow and some Fantasy and Games Arbuckles Brown. For our highlights, we're using War Colors, just straight white as well as scale color white sands. And for our glaze colors to do some various effects, we're using war colors, brown glaze and pink glaze. I just did a product review of these on my channel last week. We're gonna put them to use. I've got a lot of these paints over here on the palette already. So you can see them over here. My palette is kind of messy right now because it's got some other things on it, but I'm trying to, tried to bring the ones I'm gonna use here into focus. So the first thing I'm going to do is take some of this uh, black art brown here. This is sort of this would basically be your flesh tone. Um, you can use brown tones mixed with a little white, depending on what they are, to do almost any flesh tone, and it actually works pretty well. Um, if they tend to be a more sandy color, it's actually quite a nice alignment. So we're going to take this. I want to make sure I have this in zoom at the height I'm going to need to paint at. There we go. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're just going to very quickly run a nice light glaze of that over just to get this a little more tinted into the flesh color spectrum. Quick, dirty, easy. Okay. So step one. Apply some flesh tone. Wow, that's a real mystery step there. I'm sure nobody would have thought of that. All right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to sketch out some of our shadows. And this figure is interesting because she has her hair very much in her face. So I'm going to start with my Indian shadow, which is kind of a red color. And that's the key. In your shadows for a female face, you need a lot of red tone shadows. We Female faces tend to have a lot of pink tones in them. Some of that's artificial. But there's a reason why women wear sort of makeup that adds rouge and pinkness to it. Um, it is more healthy, vivacious, alive. It's Your eye is drawn to it, all that sort of thing. 
So we want our shadows to often be pretty red as well. So I'm going to take a little Indian shadow here. Get it nice and thinned out. Okay. Yeah, that's good. You can see how thin that is. Wick off the excess onto a paper towel. And now what I'm going to do is just very carefully I'm going to come in here and lay it into the eye socket. Along the side of the nose. And over the lips. Up into this crease at the top of the head. And down here on the lower sides of the cheeks. Okay. I'm not sure how well that shows, but that's what I'm doing. Part of the problem with this is just how small we have to paint for this. But I didn't really have a giant female face. So I'm doing this as a relatively thin glaze. So I'm going to come in with a couple coats. I want to draw my shadows near the edge of the hair. Up into this area. Toward the center. Right? So what I'm getting now is some of that red tone in there. And where I'm trying to focus it is on the underside of the cheek here. Up under and around the eyes. and then very near where the hair falls. Okay. All right, there you go. So now you can see some of that red starting to come through. And that's just it. When we work real thin like that, sure, it might take a couple shots to get it how dark we want, but the advantage is we can build it up slowly. We have good control over it. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into that Arbuckle's brown, which is a very, very dark brown. Now, if you want to get real sassy here, you can mix this with just a touch of green. I know that sounds crazy, but a nice deep green can actually be a great color to add to some shadows. I won't do that here, um, but it can be a very good selection to really deepen the shadows of flesh tone. And that's mainly because when I cover it over in red in later steps, it will desaturate that even farther. So now I'm going to take this very dark brown. I'm going to try to get just around the eyeballs very carefully. Basically, I'm going to try to paint the whole eye. I'm going to aim toward the very center at the bridge of the nose, like right here. I want to get just a little bit down in that shadow of the side of the nose. A little bit up top, near this hairline. A little bit there. I want to get the center of the lips, like in between where the lips part, right in between the two lips. And then we're going to get the deepest part of the cheek over here. Because what we want to do is we really want to frame the face, okay? And when, earlier when I talked about that T-section, which runs down here and across the cheeks, to make it pop, we need the contrast. And the contrast is going to come from having the deeper, darker areas in the area around the eyes and that sort of thing, okay? Okay. Okay, so we're just going to leave those shadows in place for a moment, okay? I'm not worried too much about them, uh, but what I'm going to do is I am going to now get back to my flesh tone, and I'm going to grab some white sands. I have that over in a different part of the palette because I couldn't fit it all in one area here, but there you go. There's some white sands, and I'm just going to mix some of that in. You notice we almost get a pink, well, it doesn't really show on camera, but in reality, this is a somewhat pinky color you get from taking this brown and mixing in that ivory sands. That's one of the reasons I love this brown. It has a slight tone of pink to it, which makes it really wonderful for flesh. Again, wick off the excess. A little more. Okay. And then I'm going to come in and just very lightly hit the tops of the cheeks. I'm going to get the top of the lip not the not the actual lip but like the area above her lip <laughs> the area where if you're a guy you have a mustache okay i don't i don't know what to say to that area it's not your lip proper but you know that area above your lip and we're going to get the ch the chin a 
I'm also going to get the top of her eyebrow here. Just light touches. Okay. So now we get is we built up that contrast. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is sort of bring this all together. Uh, wait, before that, sorry, getting ahead of myself. I'm going to go back into my white sands, just white sands alone. Mix it with just a dab of my actual white here. Very, very thin. You can see how thin that is. And now what I want to do is I'm just going to hit the tip of the nose, tips of the top of the lip, tip of the chin, tiny area on the top of each cheek. So now I'm really just hitting this T-section with almost a pure white. A very thin white, but almost a pure white. That's because I really want to push that highlight up. Okay, at this stage. Now, one thing that I realized as I'm looking at this on camera is that she kind of looks very clowny, like her skin looks very pale. Part of that's because of the read of the white balance in the color right now, and part of that is because of her hair. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause here for a moment. I'm going to block out her hair just to get the base color on, so that way we can actually see the flesh tone in the proper light. So we'll pause here for a moment. I'll be right back, and then we'll pick up with the next step. All right, we're back. So her hair is blacked in now because she's going to have dark hair. And uh, you can see how instantly the face falls much more into focus. Now, there's still a little much uh, red. It's coming in redder on the camera than it is in reality. But nonetheless, it's still a little too much contrast right now. But let me say, if you're just aiming at getting a good sort of, you know, a nice female face on the table, you can see how just building this up how we did. We're pretty much in a good place if we look at that. Um, it's going to give you contrast if you put the eyes together. You could you could call this done and be happy with your life, and that would be fine. But we're going to go farther, of course. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go back to our normal flesh tone, uh, as it were, the the black or brown. What, what's passing for flesh tone in this particular scenario? Um, and we're going to make sure it's a nice thin glaze. I'm just using some water. Just spreading it out on my palette here. Test it. Get it on the back of the hand. Perfect. Very, very thin. Now you notice I brace my hands in this. Like this video is strange to record because I have to brace my hands very carefully. This is working very small. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw it down. Directionality here matters. So I'm going up at the top of the forehead with these glazes and down on the rest of the face. Okay. And what we're trying to do is just bring all these colors together very carefully. So we're just applying these simple flesh tone glazes to just very lightly pull all this back together. Skin is itself the one of the most complex things you're going to interact with on a daily basis as far as painting goes because it has so many colors in it. You know, my hands are very much in this video, and you can see the different pinks and things like that that are in my skin tone. And so to capture that, one of the ways we can do that is having a lot of very thin glazes interacting where the light's passing through multiple layers and all of that information is being fed back to your eye. Okay, so now what we're gonna do, as that glaze dries, is I've got some pink glaze over here. You can just see it. And this is the Warcolors glaze. It's naturally extremely thin and transparent. And what I'm gonna do with it, it is very pink, by the way, and that's okay, is we're gonna do a couple things. First off, we're gonna put a little bit over her lips and then we're gonna just put a little bit over the cheeks. And we're gonna put a little bit under the eyes. And we're gonna put it just a little dab under the nose. And at the top of the chin. Okay. We want a little bit of rosiness in her skin tone. And that's what's going to give us that. Now, we're not going to stop there. 
I would never, like, this is a very pink pink. Again, I'm using this extreme pink because I happen to have it as this glaze. If you use a real pink, like a pink paint, you need to make sure that is thin as all get out because otherwise you will turn your person into a literal clown real fast. Okay, now we're going to grab some of the brown glaze, which is a wonderful sepia tone. Um, what you effectively want is something that's sort of a rust color for this. Um, so any kind of like rust colored paint is great for skin tone. That sounds weird. You wouldn't normally think of it. But then down in these lower cheek areas, we're going to just take some of that and work it in here. And that's because we want these like earthy shadows. And we're going to put some up in the eye socket, up toward the bridge of the nose, up into this area, under the lip, under the nose. And I'm just glazing back and forth there. Okay. You notice I covered some of my pink. That's once I put the brown glaze over the pink glaze, it starts to mute out that pink glaze. Now it's just a matter of working this back and forth. Okay. All of the rest of what I'm going to do here is basically repeat the same things I did multiple times, just pushing around the highlights and the shadows exactly where I want them. So like, I want to put a little more darkness into the side. So I'm going to take a little bit of my, my, uh, uh Indian, uh, shadow combined with a little bit of my Arbuckle's Brown, get something in the middle there, get it nice and thin. And then just make sure that the area deep in the corner of the eye socket is nice and dark. Make sure the area under the nose is a very pronounced shadow. Under the lip. And then down here on the side of the face. Basically, I'm just very, very carefully reinforcing those deep shadows. Then I'm going to come in with some of my brown mixed with my white, my ivory, uh, my white sands, which is just an ivory color. Again, any sort of ivory will work. And very carefully, we're going to go ahead and pick out the edge of that nose again. We're going to hit carefully the edge of the lip, a little bit of the edge of the chin, tops of the cheeks, drawing it up, and a little bit of the edge there. go into a little bit more of my pure white get some of that mixed in you can see how I'm using a little bit of that but going into a much brighter white and we're gonna just go ahead and the same thing again very lightly we're just making sure those highlights are in there. Get those highlights sketched back out. Go back into our brown. Didn't clean the brush. Get that nice and thin. Take a little bit of that over the rest of the cheek, including over that pink we put on earlier, because we want to mute that out. At this point, though, we're working very, very, very thin. We are not intending to move these colors large amounts each time we put paint on. We want small movements to bring those colors together, right? And so what we should get now is a nice transition across the cheek line into something more rosy and red. The nose slash lip slash top of the cheek T is where our highlights will fall, okay? And we should be good to uh we should be good to go basically at this point i have to do the eyes i'll have to pick out highlights on the hair all that kind of stuff i'm going to continue doing this just sort of highlight back and forth for a little while 
repeating the exact same process you saw me do until I have everything really balanced exactly the way I want it. But effectively, at this point, I'm just pushing thin glazes back and forth, back and forth over the top of each other until I get to the exact coloration I want. Now, this may seem like a lot of time to spend on a tiny face. And look, if you're doing a whole army, it is. There's no way around it, okay? You have to decide how far in this you want to go. Like I said, you could have stopped at that earlier point for a gaming figure, and I think that's perfectly fine. You keep going. The, the more you're trying to focus on the single miniature, the more you're going to keep doing this. The more you're going to repeatedly apply the same techniques over and over again. Okay? Um, so, there you go. That's female faces. Uh, I hope that was helpful. As I said, these are the paints I used. You can use anything. You know, the key is a, a reasonable flesh tone. Uh, and then some whites or something like that to mix up into it. And then some darks that ha that need red or crimson in them. And then something that's like a rust style glaze and like a pink style glaze. Um, so we can get that rosiness into the face. And, uh... As well, the, the sort of brown, that sepia rusty color is great for like sort of tan or skin tones. Uh, but there you go. That's female faces. Hope you enjoyed. Give it a like if you did. Uh, subscribe for more hobby cheating in the future. Share this with somebody if you know they're doing an army where they might have a use for this. Uh, maybe they're doing some Sisters of Battle or something like that. Hey, great. This is uh, Sharing is always the nicest thing you can do and deeply, deeply appreciated. But as always, I thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.